Thanks, Len, for your warm, as always, welcome to country. It's, it, it's absolutely fantastic and uh, really appreciate you coming down. And welcome to you all. What a great turnout. It's fantastic to see you all here for the launch of Fremantle 2029, our community visioning project. I'm not going to talk much tonight. I've got the, the job of introducing our range of very good speakers and to uh, really get you engaged. Okay, so this is the launch. This is the kickoff of what is going to be a conversation that we're going to be having with all of you over the next 12 to 18 months um, around what we want and plan to make Fremantle look like in 2029 and beyond. As Graham said, this is about not just what we want for Freo, but it's about what our kids want and what our grandkids want and what our great grandkids want. It's about really thinking about some of those big decisions that Fremantle has to make. It's going to be an interactive process, it's going to be fun, and it's going to be one we hope that you enjoy being engaged and involved in. Um, so well, one of the things we want to do, we're trying out um, Twitter tonight. So the details are in the top right-hand corner there for those of you who have smartphones um, and would like to start following the process on, on, on Twitter, please um, get those, you're welcome to get those out and, um, and actually become part of that. And that will be an ongoing conversation that we're having with you using that medium and a range of others. Um, as, as Graham said, Linda's filming and it's going to be quite a, I think, a creative and interactive process. And tonight we're kicking it off with some fantastic speakers. Um, we've got Ken Michael, who I'll in, in, introduce in, in, in a second. Um, Sonny Crooks and Fred Elton are from Lance Holt School, and um, they're going to be talking, they're 12, and they're going to be talking about what they want Fred to look like when they're 28. Um, Dr Julian Bolliter, who's written an amazing book called Made in Australia, is going to be talking about some broader context for us around the future of Australian cities. Vanessa Rowland, who's a local, lives, lives in, in the heart of Frio, about sustain a, a sustainable and livable Fremantle. And finally, Griff Longley, who'll be well known to all of you around actually, how do we make Fremantle a place for people? I think you'll agree that it's a pretty exciting list of speakers and all going to be really short and sharp because that's, and, and we're going to make sure that we do some interactive stuff in between each of those. Um, as I said, there's going to be lots of range of medium, look, looking from Facebook to Vimeo to Twitter and on the web so that you can, we can keep engaged on this. There'll be regular public forums like this for you to get together, meet people and engage, but also in between time using social media to do it will be a really important part. 2029. Um, Freo's been here for a long, long time and seeing Len up there playing the did, realising that Freo is a meeting place for Indigenous people for tens of thousands of years. But 2029 is a significant date because it was when Captain Fremantle, up somewhere near the Roundhouse, in fact I've just been reading a history of Freo, which is debates as to where the flag was actually planted, but it was somewhere near the Roundhouse, planted his flag in, 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 in 2029. It was also so I say, yeah, 1829 would be more accurate, that's right. <laughs> so just checking that you're all listening. Yeah. Didn't quite sound right. But interestingly, um, 100 years after that was actually when Freo became a city in, 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 in 1929. And so, so instead of being, being a town, and, and we actually became a city in our own right in, in 1929. And then one, it's actually 180 years ago. And this, has anyone ever noticed this? I must say, I lived in Freo, I reckon, for 20 years before I, I noticed this. I think it might have actually been Peter Newman who pointed it out to me. Um, and it's, it's under the town hall. So next time you walk, under the, walk by the town hall, there's this plaque in the ground. And it's fascinating. So it was, it's a, um, what it does is it points out and commemorates the first plan for Fremantle. And that first plan was made 180 years ago, in 1833, when Frio was a bunch of tents and the roundhouse, um, and not much else. And, and, but they actually, if you look at it, you, actually, you can see this, the place we live in today that is actually mapped out there. It's amazing. And so actually is that real sense of that planning happened back then, and that plan and that vision 180 years ago is actually the foundations of what we love about Frio today. So I kind of think of us to, today as actually kind of continuing that process of a changing and evolving Frio. And just using the town hall as an example, when it was built in 1888, kind of sat there by itself, and then um, later on it was built up all around it. In the 1950s, you can see King Square is barely recognisable. In fact, uh, there's certainly, certainly no Meyer building and a whole bunch of shops behind the town hall. And then by the 1970s, a lot of those had gone and the car had... Somehow started to dominate the public spaces, 
and we had a, um, a, a town hall that was a car park and a, again a very evolving Frio. And then more recently, well, it kind of looks like that minus the Maya signs now, and, which, and we, we, this will again be evolving pretty rapidly into a building that look, might look something like that. This is the final plan, plans are yet to be finalised, but you, but you get the picture. And Frio is changing and it is evolving. And I'm excited about it. This, what you'll hear today from our speakers is there are some huge challenges in, in front of us, but that's what's exciting about how we deal with those and how we make Fremantle an even more livable space 10, 20, 50, 180 years into the future. This is actually from Julian's book, and Julian will be one of our speakers tonight. And I, I just stole this quote out of it because I thought it was quite powerful. The future just doesn't happen. It is shaped by vision and by discourse, which, which then translates into what we build. What we build this century will make or break our country, and I would add, our community. So that's why we're here tonight. <laughs> 